I, I feel very honored to be in this such a group of, of wonderful uh, presenters. Okay. So, so Garden Douglas Baltimore is planned for government wall in Troy. Troy really likes to have a lot of fun with our government buildings. Those of you who've lived here you know that we can't hang out of our city halls uh, <laughs> for various and assorted reasons. And uh, it even goes this far back, uh, well actually, well before that. Um, frankly, Troy's uh, first city hall was in the uh, basement of the Rensselaer County Courthouse, uh, the first one that was on. There's three on that particular site. And then um, finally in 1875, we got a hold of one and uh, hung out of that one until about 1938, and then that one burnt mysteriously by fire, and uh, then uh, we didn't have one again until about 1974, and we hung out to that one until about 2011. So we are now homeless again. Well, we're not homeless. We have a spot. We're up in the, we're up in the uh, what was the former Clue Peabody uh, factory main building, and uh, it's now Headley Park Place, as some of you know. But let me talk about Garnet Douglas Baltimore. So this is really an incredible man. Uh, when a child is named after two abolitionist giants of the 19th century, it's really no wonder that Garmin Douglas Baltimore was destined for greatness. Born in 1859 to Peter F. Baltimore and Caroline Newcomb Baltimore, Garnet was named after the African-American abolitionists Henry Highland Garnett and Frederick Douglass. Baltimore's early training was at the William Rich School and the Troy Academy combination of his excellent grades and his father's connections to some of Troy's most prominent citizens, including attorney and abolitionist Martin I. Townsend, led to his acceptance in the 1877 freshman class at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. He was the first African American to graduate from RPI, which he did in 1881 with a degree in civil engineering. He immediately began to work on the Albany and Greenbush Bridge across the Hudson River, in 1887, he was appointed assistant engineer to the state canal system, with his most notable work being the lengthening of the mudlock at the junction of the Oswego Canal and the Seneca River. In addition to serving for 30 years as landscape engineer at Oakwood Cemetery, with principal landscaping work being completed at the northern end of the cemetery, Baltimore was a consultant on the design of Forest Park Cemetery in Brunswick and Graceland Cemetery in Albany. He's also responsible for the landscape design of St. Mary's Hospital, which is uh, now uh, part of St. Peter's Healthcare Partners on Oakwood Avenue, and for many of the neighborhoods on the east side of Troy. In 1903, he was hired as a landscape engineer to create the 84-acre park that uh, was formerly known as Warren Park, but was soon to be named Prospect Park. If you've come across the bridge and you see the Troy sign, that's Prospect Park, sitting out on Mount Ida Hill. Um, he wrote, a report of the Municipal Improvements Commission for the City of Troy and was named chairman of the Civic Arts Committee in 1913. And that's really where um, our story today begins. So here is one of our city halls. <laughs> um, this is 1875, designed by Marcus Cummings, who came in here after the Great Fire of May the 10th of 1862, designed a number of our our grand buildings. And like Albany, we, Troy too was going through its kind of city beautiful movement. We had some of our main structures, fortunately a lot of them are still here. Um, the Rice Building at Acres Corner of uh, River Street and First, our second, our third uh, Rensselaer County Courthouse, um, and the Annex, which was the former Second Street Presbyterian Church. And then we had our, um, uh, we had our new uh, Rensselaer County Courthouse built around the 1896 when that was finished. So he's looking at this and he has decided that, well, that building now is already you know, some 30 plus years old. It's a little dated uh, in its appearance and he's looking to modernize the city. Uh, we are really going through the flux of change, just most, most like, like most of the uh, northern cities were at that point. So here's the plan. Uh, what he had intended on doing, um, it's a little, it's a little hard to see, but basically, if you can think of everything from the jail on Ferry Street, which is now the family court offices, so that's anchoring over on the hillside to the east, and then coming all the way across the west, so that means getting rid of Rare Form Brewery, 
the shop, um, what was Trojan Hardware, um, across the street from the other, what was the other food circus market, uh, Jimmy's Luncheonette, uh, The Rock, <laughs> everything between there would be completely torn down. Uh, so all, again, some of those wonderful uh, um, uh, early 19th century brownstones that also anchor, particularly the block where the rock. And that was all between Ferry and Congress Street. And then when you get up to what is already currently still the uh, Rensselaer County Courthouse, uh, the Troy Public Library, uh, then across the street, that second street, you have this rest of the plaza, which if some of you ladies may have attended Russell Sage College, um, at the time, in 1913, though, it was an empty campus. Emma Willard had moved out to the east side, and there was this empty campus here. Now what are we going to do with these, with these buildings? And so what he had proposed um, was that this government mall would include a conventions and federated hall um, on the site of what is now the modern courthouse annex. So basically across the street from the Rock on, on 3rd Street. And it would link then to the empty Willard, empty M. Willard School. Um, Emma Willard, or the Russell Sage College, by the way, did not open until 1916. Um, this was certainly in keeping with lots of other plazas that were linking the city. He also was going to have these two whole city blocks um, that would have a new city hall and four city buildings that would house various departments. And then he was going to decorate that with walkways and fountains. Um, to really make this, this really quite a very interesting um, plaza. Let me just show you a couple more photos. So this is a view of Congress Street that actually is looking east. And it's amazing, in the, in the more than 10,000 images that we have at the Rensselaer County Historical Society, it always confounds me that there are empty holes. And I'm sure you found that the same in, in most cities. That for some reason, just did not get photographed at different times. So kind of think of this side of everything on Congress Street. Um, those of you who are familiar with Troy, you can see this wall that's right up here at the head. That's, that is where the Rensselaer County Government Center is. That's still part of the retaining wall from the Tibbetts Mansion that was on the site. Um, and up in the hill, um, which is 8th Street, going across there, College Avenue is creeping up on the other side. Um, that is where Garnet Douglas Baltimore lived. Um, so he, he lived in, and died there, uh, as a matter of fact. And so all this would be gone, everything off to the, off to the right side. Um, this is a view up, so this would be the, the west side of kind of anchoring this park. What you see along the, the, um, the uh, uh, broad iron fencing, that is, is what was then as the um, Willard School. And you're looking north on 2nd Street. So that whole row of beautiful brownstones, of course, was taken down in the um, early 1960s by Russell Sage College. Um, that was the Ronaldo, um, really a wonderful townhouse. Um, this building, which is now a, a kind of a modern uh, version of that, uh, is Moss Bookstore. Uh, so if you're familiar with that, Brewers is right next door. <laughs> so this, the camera angle is just to where the angle of the Redstone County Courthouse is. So you're seeing, so you're really coming into this residential area. And it's interesting today, of course, that the county courthouse is still on that same spot. So we have this mix of, of education and, um, and uh, governmental section, as well as residences. And he was, he, he was still gonna keep that. And then this is the eastern end of that. Um, this is the Rensselaer County Jail that was finished around 1827. Uh, they ended up building the newer building, which as I, as I mentioned now is the um, uh, family court uh, right across the street from Firestone. And uh, they moved, uh, now the, move, the jail has moved farther down south, right? So this is a view looking east up Congress Street. So it's a lot of, it's a, it's a, it's a huge territory that he was thinking of radically changing. Um, those of you who come in the tunnel, you're coming up on the tunnel on Ferry Street. And here is the courthouse. This is not too long after it was finished, um, the, the third courthouse, again designed by Marcus Cummings. And uh, you can see uh, next to that was the Second Street Presbyterian Church, which was then converted as to the courthouse annex as it exists today. Uh, what you can't see just outside of the shot of that is the Troy Public Library. Um, the Troy Public Library is finished in around 1897. So he, is, he already had his vision in mind of how this whole thing was going to be anchored with these very impressive buildings. I mean, this is uh, Jay Barney and Sons, New York City, a very fine architect. Um, if those of you who've never been into our Troy Public Library, please go see it. It's an absolutely incredible building. Tiffany Windows behind the main desk. 
uh, incredible cast uh, wrought iron um, freestanding stacks with glass floors. It is a beautiful, beautiful building. Um, and then the other anchor, the very farthest uh, west anchor, the only building left, because what he actually talked about in the plan was the Troy Club. And the Troy Club burned in the mid-1980s. Um, that anchored the corner of First Street and Congress. But this uh, building, which was a wonderful uh, Greek revival uh, designed by James Dakin of New York City in 1835, uh, is the first Presbyterian church, uh, which is now part of Russell Sage College and the uh, Juliet Howard Bush uh, Memorial uh, Pavilion. <clears throat> and I had to just leave you with this slide, because if you didn't get a chance to see that picture image over there, this is, this is Tom's place. <laughs> um, his image came from our collection. So, um, God of Baltimore, I, just, I think it's interesting because he does take this very kind of holistic look at, at how the landscape, of course that is what his, his passion is. And if you ever go to any of his, any of his sites, uh, particularly Oakwood, or not, yes, well, even Oakwood Cemetery, north of the ponds, if you go out to Forest Park Cemetery, which you can only do once a year, you have to take it, that's the cemetery that everybody says is the most haunted. I don't believe it. Um, but take Sharon Zankel's tour, and you'll see how he really designed everything with these kind of curvilineal paths, and was very, very thoughtful about how he wanted to have the landscaping done. And um, it's really kind of, well, you know, I don't want to see buildings burn down, but it really would have been an interesting plan. <laughs> so that's it. I'm sure today. Thank you.